Time for a weekly conversation with Kyle Davis, head coach of the Florida Wildcats. Coach, how are you? Uh, doing good, Robert. Doing good. Um, enjoying our bye week right here. Uh, a couple of days of practice and a couple of days off, do a little scouting. So uh, not taking it easy, easy, but we're we're trying to rest up a little bit. Is this one of those much-deserved weeks off? I mean, a lot of teams, most teams, I guess, at some point in the regular season have that bye week. Yours came at the end of the year. Is it kind of one of those, whew, we're there? Yeah, I mean, especially in the situation that we're in. Um, you know, there, uh, there's some guys that, that, you know, they like it, you know, the middle of the year and kind of regroup or something like that. But, you know, uh, our situation was really good for us because, um, you know, we I, we needed this after the, you know, we got in the playoffs. We had a hard-fought game last week. Uh, we got some guys that, you know, they're not hurt, but they're obviously hurting because, I mean, in 10, 10 weeks of football, you're going to hurt, you know. So uh, it's good for us to – uh, kind of get this opportunity to rest up and uh, get ready for round one. Let's talk about the loss to Elba. There was a point in the third quarter where you got the lead, and then late in the ball game, they come away with a victory. But overall, I know you're not happy with an L, but you got to be pleased with the performance. Yeah, no um, effort. We were we're definitely pleased. Um, you know, there's a again, like you said, nobody wants to take the loss and and try to go on moral victories. I I, I think we're way past that, uh, obviously, just by the kind of football that we're playing and the kind of team that I think that we are. Um, but you know, there's a lot of things that we can take away from it. I mean, uh, we held Henderson to under 100 yards in the first half and under 200 yards on total. I think it's like 197, it's 199, something like that for the game. Uh, our defense played phenomenal. Um, you know, there's about two or three plays in the ball game that uh, that really just kind of, you know, moved the momentum, changed the tide. You know, we we were up 12 nothing, and uh, we gave up a touchdown pass when we were 12 six. And you know, you figure you're going to give up running touchdowns to them, but passing touchdowns that's not really something you think you're going to give up. And uh, we gave that one up, and then you know we came out in the second half with the football and the lead, and we throw a 62 yard touchdown pass. Uh, it would have put us up by at least 12, maybe 14, and uh, gets negated by a blindside block. So, you know, then two plays later, we throw the interception, and, you know, they go down and score. So it's a, ultimately possibly a 16-point swing right there. So um, <clears throat> just some things that that we, uh, we know we can correct, we know we can fix. They were definitely errors of, you know, uh, hustle and not errors of, you know, laziness and things of that nature. So uh, we're hoping that, you know, we get in these playoffs and, and we play hard and fight hard and maybe get another shot at them later on down the road. And by the way, for those who may be going away, the guy gained 197 yards. That's a pretty good day. Not for him. This guy runs uh, on average for about 280 per game. So you held him nearly 100 yards below what he typically does, Alvin Henderson. Oh, yeah. Well, Coach Green had a great plan. I feel like we had a great, great plan for him on defense. And our kids, you know, they sold out to the plan. Um, you know, first, you know, they didn't get anything the first two drives. They had to put on first drive, stopped on fourth down, second drive. We go up 12 nothing off both those drives. Um, like I said, I just think we kind of ran out of gas there. You know, like you said, we got the lead, you know, about midway through the third again. We got it back after they took it over after the interception. And then I think we just kind of ran out of gas. Uh, you know, just a couple of things just didn't go our way. And we just kind of, you know, not not that we quit by any means. That's not what I'm saying. But it just was kind of one of those, you know, kind of like a boxer with body blows, right? We just gotten so many, so many, so many. It just kind of uh, took its toll on us. But, um, you know, I tell people all the time, you know, you can, you can, you can have a great game defensively uh, and give up four plays and lose. And you can have an awful game offensively and make four plays and win, you know. And so that's just kind of, you know, what happened to us, I think. But, man, like I said, Coach Green did a great job. Our defense was outstanding. Uh, you know, we've got we've got three guys in the top five in 1A in tackles, and that's just, that's just a testament, again, to how solid defensively we've been all year. Reflecting back now, uh, that's 10 consecutive weeks that you played football without the break. If there had been a break somewhere earlier, and I know hindsight's twenty twenty, and in this particular case, you had no bearing on the schedule. But had you had a break 
prior to Elba, maybe a week before or two or three, do you think it would have made any difference? I don't, Robert. Actually, I think it would have hurt us. I, I think that, you know, I've said this on your program a few times. When, when we lost to McKenzie uh, and went to three and two and one and two in the region, I think if we'd have had a break then or if something would have come up where we'd have had a, a moment for the kids to kind of stop and reflect, I, I think that doubt would have set in and creeped in. But but it didn't. I mean, we, we just kept right on battling. And our kids, you know, that to me, uh, that was the – determining point of our season you know I got with the seniors and coach green we talked to the seniors and we just kind of talked to them and they kind of you know took the reins a little bit and you know we started tightening down on the discipline you know not that we weren't disciplined already but you know there's some things when a new coach comes in you know that he's worried about you know the way he does things and, and the old coach you know there's not a lot of transition time and you don't want to run kids off at the same time you know and this is a lot of things going on but you know, there's some things we invoked and that we started that I, I really just think helped our football team. And I think if we'd had time to stop, we might would have, you know, overthought it a little bit and 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 that kind of stuff. But now I told my coaching staff, this is the 24th year I've done this, and and I've I've coached some teams that weren't so good, and I've coached some teams that were pretty good. And this team has grown more than any team that I've coached in 24 years. Just watching the growth of them, uh, maturity wise teammate wise football wise i mean it's, it's just been it's been amazing to watch reflect on the year i mean you come in late you get to florella in august and i think automatically folks who watch a lot of football are like well man listen if you finish five and five that's going to be amazing uh you finish seven and three and then during the course of that time you beat somebody that hasn't been beaten in about 34 years at florella brantley so from an outsider's perspective, it's been a very, very good first year. What about from an insider's perspective? What does Kyle Davis think about his first regular season at Florella? Um, very, I mean, pleased, obviously. Uh, you know, I have said this on here before, too. I mean, it, you know, sometimes things happen, and you're not real sure why they happen or for what reason, but it turns out to be a huge blessing, and, you know, getting down here and getting around these kids and getting around this community and these people and uh, being able to um, coach some some guys that really, you know, enjoy football. And uh, that was something I noticed right away. I knew we had talent. I, I didn't know if we could get it together. Like I said, obviously there were some hurt kids after Coach Cantrell left because, I mean, they had great relationships with him. They developed great relationships. And, you know, for you to come in – You've got to grab those reins and try to establish those same relationships. Maybe where there's trust issues or maybe where there's, you know, this guy can't take that guy's place. And that's not what you're trying to do. But I, in a kid's mind, you know how, you know, how kids can think. Um, and we just kind of got to work. And uh, like I said, over the course of this year, I've, I've watched a, a bunch of individuals at times turn into a, a good team, like a, a true team that supports one another, plays hard for one another. Um I think any coach on my staff will tell you, when we talked to those guys in the locker room the other night before that Elba game, that might have been the most focused any group of 36 kids I've ever seen in my life where they were locked in, uh, they were listening to what we had to say. They're true believers right now of, of our mission and what we've got going on. Um, we feel like we're one of the best teams in South Alabama right now. Now, whether or not we, we end where we want to end, we don't know, right? we got to take it week by week, but – I mean, from an internal perspective, like I said, I mean, I, I'm, I feel blessed. I feel blessed to be here, blessed to have this opportunity, uh, blessed to coach these kids. And um, I don't. I think what a lot of people don't realize is, is you know, this team that we have right now. Yeah, we lose some integral pieces, but there's a lot of guys coming back too. So I think the future's bright for for LA football. You got a week off, I would assume Friday night. Somebody is headed to wherever Maplesville is playing this week because they are your first round opponent. And really the difference uh, in the loss or the victory over Elma, you would have been playing Otaga Academy, who, boy, when you look at the seasonal numbers, they're about the same as Maplesville. So it's, you know, six of one, half dozen of the other. Um, so I'm assuming somebody's watching them on Friday night. Why don't we look for a week from Friday in Maplesville? Um I mean, obviously, uh, Maplesville is one of those programs that, that carries a lot of tradition. You know, I mean, if you're not familiar, you know, you can associate them in the South with a, with a T.R. Miller, you know, or, you know, a, a, a Spanish Ford or, 
you know, folks that have, like I said, carry long traditions of solid football, you know, or Brantley, you know, or Brantley that, that, you know, makes the playoffs all the time and has a lot of region championships, a lot of state championships. Uh, so, you know, they have a thought process and a belief that uh, you, you don't lose in the first round at home, you know, and, and so they're going to probably carry that, that moxie. They're going to carry that, that, that swagger when we come, um, you know, we don't, I mean, again, without disrespecting them as a team and respecting what they are, we don't feel that they're better than any team that we played this year. Again, I think that's one of the great things about playing in Region 2. I mean, if you get out of Region 2 and make the playoffs, you've been prepared. You know, we've we played a Brantley that we've beaten, and we've played an Elba that's number five team in the state that we went toe-to-toe with, and we played a, a Georgiana and a McKenzie that's 9-1, and one, and both of those beat us. But, you know, we feel like we're a better team than we, now than we were then when we played them. So, uh, you know, expect them to be, you know, throwing the football. Um, they, they like to throw the football, uh, you know, not not like we do. But, I mean, they're not just a, a ground and pound team. They're, they're very multiple in, in their looks. They're a shotgun spread team. Uh, defensively, they're a 3-5 team. So, really, we're very mirror image, I think, of, uh, of who we are, you know, as far as um, uh, uh, formationally. Now, schematically, I think we're a little different. But, um, you know, we, we do like the matchup. Uh, we, we would have liked either one of the matchups, we felt like. We, like you said, I think Otago Academy lost to them 21-20. I think that was the score uh, when they played. And that's the only region loss they had. I don't think maybe we had a region loss. So, like you said, they're very similar uh, in who they are. But, um, you know, like I, I told you last week, you know, we, I think right now we're a really good football team. And, um, yes, it's going to be a tough game. And, and yes, we, we do think that, uh, that they're definitely, especially on their own turf, have a lot of confidence in who they are as a team. But we also, again, we, we still like where we are. And, and we believe, you know, if we go up there and uh, do what we need to do, uh, that we can uh, bring football back to Matthew Stadium one more time. Two times you played Maplesville in the history of Florella, and uh, the last was 17 years ago. And as a matter of fact, I remember that particular night. I uh, thought that maybe Florella would come from behind, but did not, lost at 54-30. So that's the last time these two teams have met, but you'll meet again a week from Friday night. And Coach will talk more about Maplesville next week. Congratulations on a great year, and we will chat next weekend. Sounds good, Robert. Thanks for having me on, man.